part. So we're looking at question two, A, part one. 3p squared times 4p to the fifth power. Let's solve that, simplify that. Rather, we'll have the coefficients multiplied. So 3 times 4, that will give us 12. And p squared times p to the fifth power. We'll keep the base. We're going to add the powers. And that will give us 12p to the seventh power. In case you're lost with how we got that, then you'll need to do some revision on that concept. The idea is if you multiply two quantities with the same base, you add the powers. Conceptually, we could go a little further deeper, but due to time, we'll have to move on. So just in case you need to review, please review that concept. Now, we're actually dividing two fractions. And we know the basics of dividing fraction. We change division to multiplication and reciprocate the divisor. So we're going to do the same thing here. We have 3x over 4y to the third power multiplied by we're going to reciprocate, so we have 20y squared. And when I say reciprocate, the denominator becomes a numerator and vice versa. Now, after this, we're now going to we're gonna simplify. So we're now we're, gonna, we're taking the factors of a numerator and a denominator and simplify. So we're going to take 3 as a factor of 3 and 21. So we're going to say 3 into 3 goes once, and 3 into 21 goes 7 times. Can we cancel anything else? Is there a common factor between x and x squared? Yes. So x can go into itself once, and x can go into x squared x times, because x times x is x squared, of course. All right, y squared and y to the third power. Well, we know y squared can go into itself once, and y squared can enter into y cubed y times, because y times y squared give us y cubed. Now, 4 and 4 goes once, and 4 can go into 25 times. And so simplifying all, we have simplified all that, so let's tidy up. So we have 1 over y multiplied by 5 over 7x. And to simplify that further, we have 5 times 1 is 5, or 1 times 5 is 5. And y times 7x is 7xy. If you have any issue with that, then you'll need to do some revision on that concept. So this will be your answer. 5 over 7xy. Alright, so looking at the next step, Solve, we have 3 divided by 7x minus 1 plus 1 over x equals 0. Now, there are several ways we can actually do that. Well, one way we can do it, we can actually, let me just get a, that's there. All right, so what we have there. Well, the LCM, let's find the LCM. When adding two fractions, one thing we can actually do is to, well, one thing we need to do is to ensure that we have the denominators being the same before we can actually add them. And we have an equation here, but let's um, simplify the left-hand side, which is the fraction. And the LCM will be the product of the denominators. So we're going to combine them. And that's what you usually do when you have um, variables in the denominators. You just simply combine the, the denominators as, as products. That would be the LCM. So 7x minus 1 can enter 7x minus 1 times x, x times. And so we're going to have 3 times x. Plus, how do I get the 3 times x? Again, 7x can enter into 7x minus x. 
I think I want to do that at the side so you can have a good idea what's happening here. So we're taking the LCM, which is 7x minus 1 times x. We're dividing by the LCM, which is of, the LCM of 3 over 7x minus 1. Let's repeat that. We're taking the denominator of the first fraction, which is 7x minus 1, and divide it into the LCM. And that will leave us with x. I'm going to take x now and multiply by 3, give us 3x. So that is what happened at the side there. All right. And the next, we're going to take x and divide it into the LCM. So again, if we have the LCM being 7x minus 1, times x, we're now going to divide by the denominator of the second fraction, which is x. We divide it into, divide x into the LCM, we, left, we are left back with 7x minus 1, we multiply by, by 1, which is a numerator, that will give us 7x minus 1. All right, so hopefully that was clear, and we're going to go further. We have to go further, right back there, the right hand side was equal to zero. All right, so what we have so far, we can simplify. So we have 3x plus 7x, which is equal to 10, 10x minus 1 over 7x minus 1 times x equals 0. How do we simplify that further? That's the big question. All right, so one moment. All right, so to simplify that further, well, we want to get rid of the denominator. So what we can do, we can multiply both sides by the denominator. And the denominator is 7x minus 1 times x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by that. So I'm going to just make it easy. Multiply both sides here by the denominator, which is 7x minus 1. Um, times x. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. 7x minus 1 times x and so what that will do we will be able to cancel 7x minus 1 times x goes itself once goes here to that once and on the right hand side if you know of course if we multiply anything by 0 we get by 0 so we end up with 10x minus 1 equal 0 Again, the right hand side, multiplying that quantity by zero, we get back zero. All right, so simplifying further, we're going to add one to both sides, or we can say we're going to take negative minus one over to the right hand side, we're going to put 10x is equal to minus one goes over us plus one. So zero plus one is one. Next step is to divide throughout by 10. Dividing both sides by 10. And so we end up with 10, 10 goes once. So we have 1x is equal to 1 over 10. And that's our solution. All right, so we're on to part C now. And for part C, let's just Tidy that up a bit. For part C, we're told that when a number x is multiplied by 2, the result is squared to give a number, to give a new number, which is y. So read it over again. We have when a number x is multiplied by 2, I want to highlight it. The result is squared. So we're going to square this result and to give a new number y. So let's translate that. 
we have the number x first of all and then we're going to multiply by 2 and of course that's the result there's 2 times x is 2x so that's the result so the result is squared so we're going to square 2x to give a new number y so of course we've seen that 2x squared is equal to y looking at the first uh, instruction that we are to carry out express y in terms of x already we started so we have y is equal to 2x to be squared and of course 2x to be squared will be 4x squared because 2x times 2x is 4x squared and so we have y as a subject so we've just expressed y in terms of x that's what it means all right, the next, next step part two. It says determine the two values of x that satisfies the equation y equal x and the equation derived in C one. So the two equation. We have this equation that's been given to us now, and the second equation is the one that we derived in C1. And of course, if we look back in C1, look back in C1, we realize it's y equals 4x squared. So we're going to take those two equations and determine the two values of x that satisfy both of those equations. Let's write out those two equations. So we're told that y is equal to x. That's the first equation. Are we just letting that be the first equation? And the one we derived earlier is y equals to uh, 4x squared. That's our second equation. Now, since x is equal to y and 4x squared is equal to y, then we know that this implies that 4x squared is actually equal to x or x is equal to 4x squared, because they're both equal to y. They have the same value, in other words. Now, once we have that, it implies that we can actually solve. This is a quadratic, so we have to ensure, once we solve in a quadratic equation, we have to ensure that's equal to 0. So we're going to take the x and move it to the left-hand side. In other words, transpose it. And we have 4x squared minus x equals 0. A better way to explain that is that we have we add, we subtract x from both sides. All right, so for x squared minus x equals zero. To solve this quadratic, we do recognize that we can actually factorize the left hand side. So x goes into 4x squared 4x time, and x goes into itself once. So we have x multiplied by 4x minus one. Of course, we use distributive property we get back the 4x squared minus x. And of course, this is equal to zero. Now, if both those quantities, when multiply, give us zero, then it means that both those quantities, uh, one of them is equal to zero. Since we don't know which one, we can say either the x is equal to zero, or that's the first quantity, and the second quantity is 4x minus one. It could be that one that's equal to zero. And in that case, we'll need to solve for x. So we're going to add x, add 1 to both sides. So we end up with 4x equal 1. Or we can say we transpose the minus 1 over as plus 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Then we divide in both sides by 4. So let's, let's divide both sides by 4. And what we have remaining is x is equal to 1 over 4. So our two solution for x is that x is equal to 0 or x is equal to a quarter. Two values of x that satisfy the equation. And of course, if we look back, if we put, if we do put uh, uh, 0, where x is, um, we'll have y is equal to 0. Well, of course, we say y is equal to x. 
So for every value of x that we have, we know we'll actually have y equal x. We put zero here, where square x will be zero. Zero times four is four is zero, sorry, and y is equal to zero. So when x is zero, y is zero. And of course, the equation one tells us that y is equal to x. If we put a quarter, square quarter, we get um, one over 16, and one over 16 times four is a quarter, which is equal to y. So x will be equal to quarter, y is equal to quarter. So we can see that x is equal to y as the first equation states. So those are two values for x. We can actually just write it out that x is equal to pretty much done here. You can see x is equal to zero and x is equal to a quarter. Those are two solutions.